It's been a tough few weeks for Manchester United, hasn't it? Three defeats in four games, young boys West Ham and now Aston Villa at the weekend in the Premier League. Solskjaer is certainly under pressure. After the summer that United have had, the expectations this season are different. But we're seeing the same problems that we've seen before under Solskjaer. What I want to do in this video is take a look at what Gary Neville had to say about that defeat to Villa. Hear his opinion on Solskjaer, on Manchester United's problems at the moment, what needs to change, how can it change? That's what I want to do. Take a look at what Gary has to say and react to his comments. So if you do enjoy this video by the end of it, please subscribe and also throughout the entire video at any point, just leave your own opinion in the comments. I always want to know what you have to say because let's be honest, this is a very tough and I would say quite a delicate situation that United find themselves in right now. And let's waste no time. Let's get straight in and let's take a look at what Gary Neville had to say about that loss to Villa. Where, where, I mean, the odd bunch, you've called them that for a long time. Are, are you in that kind of frame of mind about them again? Look, I, I, I said it, even when they were winning, even when Ronaldo scored, they don't play well enough as a team to win this league, in my view. They don't play well enough as a team. Um, I think that you have to be a unit in possession and out of possession. And when you only deliver in moments, those moments won't go for you in certain games. You need patterns of play. You need a way of playing. And I, at this moment in time, still see a group of individuals playing in moments with some patterns and combinations at time, but still a team that's, you know, some of them pretty new together. Obviously, Ronaldo, Varane, Sancho's not settled in yet. Uh, but they've got to come together as a team and start to define a style of play. And then you start to get results when you don't play well. It's kind of mad that we're still having these conversations. Style of play, not playing as a unit, not playing as a team. There's no excuses for that anymore. It's three years into Solskjaer's reign as United's manager. We should have a well-defined style of play and we should be a well-defined team and a cohesive unit. But we're just not. We are. As Gary said there, we're a team of moments. Whether that's Greenwood scoring the winner against Wolves and we didn't really deserve it because its overall team performance was poor. Whether it's David De Gea making a double save against Wolves. Whether it's Mason Green were coming up with the equaliser. Of course, individual brilliance and individual moments, they win football games. Goals are scored by individuals, not as teams. But as a collective force, Manchester United, I think probably straight off the bat, off the top of my head, I would say the second 45 minutes, probably the first, the first 20, 30 at least, we actually looked like a team against West Ham. We came out, we pressed as a unit. The front three pressed together. The midfield squeezed the space. We won the ball back nice and high up the pitch. We pressed as a team. We pressed collectively as a unit. And we put West Ham under all sorts of pressure. We didn't have the finishing. We didn't take our chances. But the fact that we're still having these conversations three years down the line means there's problems there, man. And the problems are definitely double-headed, I would say. Because the coaching simply isn't good enough. When you make mistakes and when you see mistakes, that happens in football. But for the same patterns and the same mistakes and the same issues and the same conversations to be had three years down the line, despite all these new players coming in and all these players going out, it goes to show that the players aren't necessarily the problem. The coaching at Manchester United simply is not good enough. We knew that. We, we realised that this summer. That's why we brought in Eric Ramsey to fix our set pieces. Might be a bad time to speak about it, given that we just conceded a late winner to Aston Villa on the set pieces, but we've been better at defending them, albeit we'd be, we're still crap at causing threats with them. But we recognised our own problems with set pieces and we brought in Eric Ramsey. How are we not recognising our own problems with our defensive coaching and bringing someone in? Because the fact of the matter is, we're just not good enough defensively as a unit. A clean sheet is an utter rarity. Complete rarity at Manchester United. And to say that with a back five of De Gea, Maguire, Varane, Short and Wambasaka is outrageous. That team really should be keeping plenty of clean sheets. And Fred and McTominay, they are not the problem. They are symptomatic of the wider problem that Manchester United have. We just have no midfield. We are Donut FC. There's nothing in the middle. And therefore, it's very difficult for United to build up any sorts of patterns of plays because we don't have a midfield there. And we don't have a defensive unit that's strong enough, that Solskjaer trusts enough to play maybe... Pogba and Matic as a midfield too, which would clearly offer a lot more than Fred and McTominay, but Matic is a bit too old. That's why we all wanted that defensive midfield sign in the summer because we we, we recognised that that was a key position that needed to be improved on. 
And until that comes in, and until Solskjaer has a defence that he feels he can trust, he's going to keep playing Fred and McTominay, which hampers the team. And yeah, it's, we should not be having these conversations three years in, but Gary's right. We are still a team that plays in moments. And that is what makes us so angry as United fans, because we keep seeing it. Why can the coaches at United, why can they not see it? Or maybe they do see it. It's either they, they do see it and they can't fix it, or they don't see it and they don't think it's a problem. Both of those are problems. And let's move on to hear what Gary Neville had to say next. And I think the way they are at the moment, they'll always have days like that yesterday. They'll have patches of you know four or five games where they'll only win two, but then they'll go and win 15 on the bounce and be unbeaten away from home for I don't know how long. That's the type of team they are. I have called them the odd bunch because I still look at them and think as though they're a team that wins games in moments. When I look at Chelsea and I look at Liverpool and I look at City, they're teams. They, 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 they put team performances in. And that's not to say United never do, but Oli's got to get them now into a team. Now, Gary here, again, he's reiterating this idea that he doesn't think United are a team. And if we're looking at patterns that keep emerging at United, I can guarantee you what's going to happen right now. Solskjaer is under pressure. His job is under scrutiny and his job is under question. Therefore, what Manchester United will do now, like we did back in November after we lost to Istanbul, we were knocked out by Leipzig. What happened? United rallied. United will rally behind Solskjaer here again. Guarantee you, we win against Villarreal, we win against Everton, and we turn it around. We, the Purple Patch FC comes out, and United, when the back's against the wall, we're going to perform for Solskjaer. But we always do that. We've done that three or four times. We'll probably repeat that pattern now. If we don't repeat that pattern, I would say that's when real concerns will have to come out. I mean, it's not as if the concerns aren't real now, but you know what I mean. Solskjaer somehow gets these players playing massively differently when our backs are against the wall, not when we have the opportunity to go and take a leap. Look, if we won that game against Villa, we would sit, be sitting top of the Premier League right now because Liverpool drew against Brentford and Chelsea lost. Had we won that game against Villa, it was a chance where we could have taken advantage of the opportunity and started to leave, but it didn't. We fell, we collapsed. That is such an issue that Manchester City... Man United will go and win... Look, we're still unbeaten away from home. It's still ridiculous, that record that we've got. But we just can't seem to build on it. It always is two steps up the ladder and then two steps back down the ladder. We've just been in this little cycle of staying in a certain position on that ladder and we've been unable to get above it. But also, we've had the ability to not go further down. And Solskjaer somehow has got to get his players to be able to take that next step up the ladder. I told you, what got you here won't get you there. That concept, that book idea saying that we've climbed that first ladder and Solskjaer has done it brilliantly as a manager, but we just can't. For the life of us, we can't get further up that next ladder. And, we, and these problems are repeating themselves again this season. And this next point that Gary says is completely and utterly true. This is, I said last two weeks ago, and this wasn't to put pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, that it was make or break, the Ronaldo signing. That's not me putting pressure on the players. It's not me putting pressure on the manager. It's a matter of fact. If you sign Cavani... Fernandez, Ronaldo, Sancho, Varane, you've got to then win a trophy at some point in the next 12 to 18 months. This season or next, when Ronaldo's here, that's why it's a make or break signing. So they have to win a trophy. Nobody can disagree with Gary there. And that is why it is different this season. That is why it is different this time around. Because when we were struggling under Solskjaer, and we, as those Istanbul games, Leipzig getting knocked out of it, you could still argue that this, this team and this squad wasn't capable of winning the Champions League or capable of challenging for the Premier League. You simply can't have that argument anymore. I know we don't have that midfield, but we still have a, we still have midfield. We still have Matic, Pogba, Fred, McTominay and Van der Beek. It's not exactly the worst midfield you're ever going to see in your entire life. So to use that as an excuse to rule out United competing in any way, shape or form is bullshit. We've got Sancho, we've got Ronaldo. We've got Greenwood, we've got Rashford, we've got Pogba, we've got Bruno, we've got Varane, we've got Maguire, we've got De Gea, we've got Shaw, we've got what well, There are so many top level players in that team that you, you need to be winning the trophies now. That's why it is different this year. That's why the pressure is different this year. And that's what Solskjaer has to prove. And whether that's getting the team playing in getting United playing as a team, sorry, playing in patterns, moving away from individual moments or brilliance. Whatever it is, the problems keep repeating themselves. And if signing new players hasn't resolved those problems, 
It goes to show that the problems don't specifically lie with the players. And for me, it lies with the coaching that we're seeing or lack thereof. Defensively, the coaching, we're not a unit together. And you have to be a unit as a defence. If you get, if you don't, you're going to be conceding like United have been. And Gary's right. You, you, there's, there is no other expectation now other than winning the Premier League or the Champions League for this team after the players that we've signed. And that is why Solskjaer is under more pressure this time than it has been, than he has been, sorry, before. And moving on to the final point that Gary had to say. So there is definitely some pressure building after that game yesterday, but they'll win five, six games on the bounce. They might lose on Wednesday, they might lose next Saturday against Everton, but they'll also then go and win 10 games on the bounce. The thing is, what I don't, you know, there's a quite a bit of yesterday, you know, pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Ole out. The club have done that in the last 10 years, eight years, and it's not worked. They will see this project through. I don't like calling managerial range projects, but they will see this through because I think they've had great managers, world-class managers, international managers in the building, and it's not worked for the club, for the fans, style of play, whatever you might call it. However, it does seem that, the, you know, ultimately this moment in time, the dressing room seems happy, but they've got to start to become a team. You have to start putting combinations together, pattern of plays. I always think when a team's... I know, I know what's going to happen when I can see Manchester City building up out of the back. I know what's going to happen at Liverpool. When Manchester United are building up at the back or through midfield, I don't know what's coming next sometimes. Now, for me, I think Gary's right. I think Gary is right that Manchester United are going to see that this Solskjaer project through. I, I also agree. I, don't, I, hate, I hate calling it a project, but what else do you call it? His reign. Um, we've tried it. We've tried plenty of things since Fergie retired. We tried it with Moyes, the Fergie replacement. On Fergie's recommendation, did not work. We tried Van Howe, the experienced teacher, I suppose, if you want to call him. That did not work. We got in bed with the devil, with Mourinho, the, the manager that we always said is not the United way. And that did not work. And we have sacked, we have sacked, we have sacked. And now... We have backed Solskjaer. We have been back in Solskjaer. He's just got a new contract. I don't think Solskjaer will be going anywhere. But United and Solskjaer have to realise that things need to change. Because if Solskjaer doesn't, and these results continue, and you keep losing and losing and losing, I don't really care what Gary says, he probably will be sacked. Results define everything in football. To a degree, though, because I think that a lot of the performances of United now are what pissing, uh, are what is pissing a lot of fans off. So it's not just about the results. Because have we, I don't know, have we got that have Bruno scored that penalty against Villa and we got like a 96th minute winner? Would everyone have been ma completely happy with that performance against Villa at home at Old Trafford? No, they wouldn't have been. And there would have been questions about that after the game, even if we had scored two late goals and won all three points. Solskjaer has the team to be capable of playing far better than we do play. Hell, even in the 4-1 against Newcastle, it took until us conceding an equaliser for the team to really come to life and really burst to life. For me, there's plenty of things that need to change and be improved. But if Solskjaer, Solskjaer right now, he's got two choices. One's a selfish one. One is an idiotic one. The selfish one is that he says, right, okay, so some things need to change. What is it? Because if it, because he either gets himself changed as manager or he changes things that are in and around him. A better coaching setup, maybe better coaching staff, better defensive coach that can come in. Because something has to give. Something has to give at United right now. It simply is not working. Fred and McTominay, they're... Uh, why keep persisting with it? Stop being so damn stubborn with it, Solskjaer. It's not just that. It is, there are so many things. As you, as you can tell, really, I'm a bit lost, a bit confused, a bit pissed off really that I'm seeing the same mistakes coming back in. And I don't think Solskjaer A should be sacked or B will be sacked. So what I need to do now is do my own research really I suppose. Look into what actually could happen. For me immediately without doing the research I think it comes down to the coaching because the, the, the same problems are repeating themselves with different players. Yes, we have to play collectively better as a team and as a unit. We have to be better defensively. There's so many things that we have to be better at. But I want to know what you think about Gary Neville's comments on Solskjaer in the comments below. Let me know what you think about his opinion. Let me know what your genuine, genuine what your opinion is on Solskjaer and what comes next for United. Because for me, it's quite simple. What comes next? We're going to have a we're going to have a boom. It's a boom bust cycle. United right now, up down, up down, up down. Not like progressive steps up the ladder. Right now, we're at the we're 
having a little mini bust. So we're going to have a little mini boom. That's what happens. It's what has happened in those patterns. You say United don't have patterns. This is a pattern that's repeating itself, that has repeated itself plenty of times already and is probably doing it again right now. So we expect United to win the next few games, but we've got to kick on from that. We have to kick on. We can't be having these conversations three years in, man. Style of play after three years and we still don't have one? That's down to coaching. Really, it is. And I know Solskjaer is the, the, the manager. He's not a good coach, I don't think. He's a good man, a good man manager, but there's lots of... The, He's got fundamental flaws and gaps in his ability as a manager that needs to be filled by others. So I don't think he's surrounded by the right people. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more depth in another video. But just let me know what you think about Gary Neville's comments there. Where do you stand on Solskjaer? Where do you stand on what Gary had to say? And if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to United People's TV. But I really will be interested to see where you stand on this.